in this lecture we will learn about how to find out the uh, time complexity of some of the recursive algorithms let's say we are discussing about this factorial fine in the last lecture uh, in the previous lectures we have discussed about this factorial how to find the factorial and uh, the factorial can be found like factorial n is equals to n into factorial n minus 1 and if the value of n is 0 it will return 1 directly we have designed a, a program also for the factorial this is the program for the factorial recursively sorry this one this is the active program of the factorial and we have seen that on every function call we are storing the activation record in the stack region now suppose uh, we have to find out the factorial of 5 if uh, you see the activation records then in the activation record first we have stored the activation record of 5 then above this factorial 4 above this factorial 3 above this factorial 2 above this factorial 1 and above this factorial 0 then you can see that we are at any point of time all these are pending fine so the maximum uh, at max how many activation records are pending 1 2 3 4 5 6 so you're finding the factorial of 5 and 6 activation records are pending at maximum at any point of time if we consider that it is a, just an assumption that uh, activation record is taking a constant space let's say the space taken by an activation record is c and which is a constant so in this case 6 into c space is reserved in the stack region so this is actually an overhead and uh, space is encountered we are actually consuming this much space so we'll say that this is actually the this is actually causing the space complexity for us fine this much extra space is required for uh, the execution of factorial function so now if we are finding the factorial of n then n plus 1 space is reserved on the stack region in the form of the activation record so we can say that n plus 1 into c because we are considering that for every activation record a constant space is required so n plus 1 into c this much space is required in the memory so that we can say that theta n space is required so the space complexity of factorial function recursively is theta n and this space is just because of uh, storing these many activation records fine and what will be the time complexity you see that uh, <clears throat> every time you need to every time a function is called you need to check this condition so if n is 0 you will return 1 otherwise you will call this function so either you will be doing this or, or, or you will be doing this fine so if you are doing this then in this case the activation records are maintained okay so <clears throat> doing the push and the pop operations on the stack is required Fine. doing push and the pop operation then stack is required so if you are doing the push operation let's consider this as one operation so n plus one times you need to push the records or the activation records and n plus one times you need to pop these activation records so n plus one plus n plus one it means this is two into n plus one operations are required push pop operations are required now if you say that uh, uh, push and the pop operations require that is the constant time then in that case the total time required is 2 into n plus 1 into let's say a constant c dash now <clears throat> uh, 2 is a constant c dash is a constant 1 is a constant in that case you can say that it is actually consuming theta n time fine so theta n time is required and theta n space is required for this algorithm so you can see that uh, uh, for the recursive function we can find out the uh, time and space complexity like this let's take another example suppose we have to find a raised to the power b <coughs> let's say we have to find we have to find a raised to the power 5 
For finding a raised to the power 5, you need to first store the activation record of a raised to the power 5. And then above this, you will store the activation record of a raised to the power 4. Above this, a raised to the power 3. Above this, a square. Above this, a power 1. And then finally, the activation record of a power 0. The base condition has reached. Now you can store the activation record of a raised to the power 0 at the first and you can return the value from here. So these are the activation records. Fine. Now you can simply see that for finding out a raised to the power 5 you are actually storing 6 activation records. 6 activation records are pending at any moment. So the space complexity may be because of this. Okay. So space complexity of this algorithm is also b plus 1 into constant space, let's say c. Let's say every activation record is taking a constant space. We can say that it's not b, it's n, so it will be a better way to write n plus 1 into c. Instead of writing this a power b, I'm taking it a power n. So n plus 1 into c is the space required. In the notations, you can represent it like theta n. Why theta n? Because uh, this is actually this much is required. In any case, it is required. There is no best case. There is no worst case. There is only one case. These many activation records will be pending. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> since you are finding out this a raised to the power b, these many push and pop operations are also required. So six push operations and six six pop operations are required. Six times you will push the activation record on the stack and six times you will pop the activation records from the stack. So n plus one times you need to push the stack and n plus one times you will pop the stack. So two into n plus one operations are required and every time you are performing the push and pop we are assuming that this push and pop operations are constant time. So c dash. So the space required here will be theta sorry time required here will be theta and 2 is a constant 1 is a constant and c dash is a constant so we are writing the time complexity as theta n right so number of pending activation records are telling us uh, uh, how many how much space complexity will be there and how many times we have pushed the uh, stack activation records and how many times we have popped the activation records are telling us the uh, this is actually helping us to find out the time complexity of the algorithm. Now uh, we have taken another example of uh, computing the uh, Fibonacci number and <clears throat> if you have this one let's say this finding out the nth Fibonacci number in the Fibonacci series and in this we uh, more than one recursive function is called Fibonacci n minus 1 and n minus 2. Let's first write the algorithm for the same or the program for the same function for the same. So let's say Fibonacci integer n. Here it will be returning an integer value. If the value of n is 1 it means we are finding out the first term. It will return first term directly as 0. It is a base condition. Otherwise if n is 2, this is also a base condition, we will return 1 here. Otherwise, means it is neither 1 nor 2, then we will return Fibonacci n minus 1 plus Fibonacci n minus 2. Right? So this is the <coughs> function for, recursive function for finding the nth Fibonacci term. Now, uh, let's say we are taking an example of uh, finding out the fifth Fibonacci term. So, finding out the fifth Fibonacci term means f5. f5 can be found by calling f4 and f3. And then f4 can be found by calling f3 and f2. And f3 can be found by filing f2 and f1. f3 can be called by calling a function f. 2 and f1. Fine. Suppose we are finding f6. So we will first find f5 and then f4. We have already had the resolution of this f5. Let's expand this f4. This will be f3 and f2. I am calling this f2 by f2 and 
f1 so wherever this f2 and f1 is coming means that we have the base base conditions and the value of n is 2 or 1 <coughs> fine now uh, just to find out that how many times the activation record was pushed on the stack and how many times it was popped or how many pending activation records are there uh, let's first compute that how many pending activation records are there okay because the number of times we have pushed or popped will be different from number of times uh, so number of pending activation records in this case so suppose we have we have to find out fifth activation record fifth fibonacci down so sorry sixth fibonacci term, for example so f6 is called it is pending and we will call f5 and f4 <clears throat> so first f5 is called f4 will be pending so f5 is called and then from f5 f4 this f4 is called this will be pending then this f3 will be called this will be pending this f2 is called and you can directly return this value of f2 fine once you return the value of f2 this activation record will be popped and then you can call this f1 so this is space is free activation of f1 activation record of f1 can be formed at this space only at the same place where f2 was so now f1 is also will be returning a value it will be returning the value to f3 so once we have the value of f3 this f3 can be popped and then we will call f2 so activation record of f2 will be called or will be made here only then uh, this f2 can return the value directly so this will be pop and then I have the value of f3 and f2 so f4 will also be complete so we can pop this then I can call this f3 in the same place where f4 was f4 has been popped out so obviously above this f3 activation record will be called so for f3 it is f2 plus f1 so first f2 is called activation record of f2 f2 can return the value directly so it can be popped out and f1 is called and then f1 can directly return the value so it is popped out f3's value we have found by adding these two f3 can be popped then i have the value of f4 and f3 so f5 i have so f5 can also be popped out it can return the value now fine so for f6 this part i was actually covered we are covering this part now f4 so on the activation record you can see that we only have this f6 so above this f4 is called for f4 f3 is called for f3 this f2 is called f2 can return the value directly so it is popped out and f1 is called it can also return the value directly so it is also popped out we can now have the value of f3 f3's value is there so we can pop this one also and then f2 is called we now have directly direct value of f2 this can also be popped out we now have a value of f4 it can be popped out so we now have the value of f5 and f4 both so f6 value is also there so the activation record of f6 can also be popped out if you see that <coughs> The maximum activation records which are pending are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At any moment, the maximum activation records which are pending are 5. So if you are finding out the factorial of 6, 5 activation records are pending and if you are finding out the uh, F9, not uh, Fibonacci, N, N is Fibonacci term, then N minus 1 activation records will be pending at any moment. So you can say that the <clears throat> space complexity is theta m but we cannot same, uh, say the same for the time complexity time complexity depends on how many times we have pushed the uh, activation record on the stack and how many times we have popped from the stack so let's try to find out for finding it finding out the same in this tree in this arrangement of the tree just consider that we are removing these these two parts from here and we are adding these two parts here okay so just for the assumption that we have this part is removed from here these two parts and the same two parts are added here fine let's say this is x and this is y this was x and this is y so these two parts are added here now we do not have this part so these are actually representing the function calls every time we are making a function call an activation record will be pushed on the stack and every time a function is returning a value 
that is actually popped out from the stack. So this is not there and we have the tree like this. If this is a tree, let's say this is level 0, this is level 1, this is level 2 and this is level 3. Now see how many uh, nodes are there at level 0? Only 1. How many nodes are there at level 1? 2. How many nodes are there at level 2? These are 4. And at level 3 we have 8 nodes. Right? So it can be written as 1 plus 2 power 1, 2 square and 2 cube. We were finding out the 6 Fibonacci term and the last term here is 2 raised to the power 3. So can it be written as 2 raised to the power n minus 3 for if you are finding out the nth Fibonacci number? Obviously if it is fn it will be 2 raised to the power n minus 3. So for the bigger number, for finding out the bigger number in the Fibonacci series, a bigger tree will be formed. So if the value of n is uh, 6, then we are finding out up to 8 or 2 raised to the power 3. If it is n, it will be up to n minus 3. So this is the total number of recursive calls. Now, you see that this is an arithmetic, this is a geometric progression with a common ratio 2. Right? And the number of terms here is n minus 2. If you remove this one, number of terms are n minus 3. If you include this one, the number of terms will be n minus 2. So the sum of this will be a into common ratio, ratio to the power number of terms, minus 1 upon common ratio, okay, so this is a into 2 raised to the power n minus 1 upon common ratio. So this will be 2 minus 1 n max. Okay. So uh, this is 2 raised to the power n minus 2. So this is the total number of function calls. And how many times uh, uh, push operation will be performed? 2 raised to the power n minus 2. And every time this value will be popped out, we will be performing the pop operations. It means that those many times pop operations are also called. So this is the push operation and this is the pop operation. So total number of operations performed are 2 into 2 raised to the power n minus 2. It means 2 raised to the power n minus 1 operations. Now for if you are performing these many operations and if you consider that every push and pop operations requires constant time of constant time. So 2 raised to the power n minus 1 into c. You can say that the time complexity of this function is theta 2 raised to the power n. c is a constant, 1 is a constant, we will omit all these things while writing this one and theta 2 raised to the power n is the time complexity of this algorithm. And you say that this 2 raised to the power n is a very large quantity, very huge quantity. Okay, if you take uh, just a simple example to understand how big this quantity is, let's say <clears throat> n is 10. So for n is 10, 2 raised to the power n minus 1 means 2 raised to the power 9. Right? 2 raised to the power 9 is actually 5 and 12. So 512 activation records will be pushed and 512 activation records will be popped. It's a big quantity. Okay? <clears throat> now so let's say n is 20. So let's say we are not finding e to the power n minus 1, we are finding e to the power n. Approximately that will be equal to that only. So it's just easy to find. 2 raised to the power 20. 2 raised to the power 20 is actually 1024 into 1024. This approximately equals to n lakh. So 10 lakh operations perform. Can you imagine? And similarly, let's say n is, n's value is 30. So it will be 2 raised to the power 30. 1024 into 1024 into 1024 this is equals to 10 crore so you see 10 crore operations are performed just for 30 so how big this operation is actually 
so it is having a lot of overhead it is performing it is finding 30th fibonacci term in call, by calling the function 10 crore times or performing 10 crore operations that is very big and if you try to find out the fibonacci term with the uh, iterative function not the recursive function iterative function it will require only 30 operations it requires only 30 additions or in, in even 28 additions not 30 in fact n minus 2 additions will be performed so only 28 additions are required so it is not necessary that the recursive functions will always result in uh, the good uh, time or those recursive functions will always uh, give us the answer in the good time they may also uh, prove to be very bad what's happening here in this case it is a very bad algorithm okay so if uh, <coughs> we say that this 2 raised to the power n minus 1 and uh, this term can be said that this is the exponential complexity and whenever there is exponential complexity for any of the algorithm that is not acceptable so the accept the uh, exponential com complexity is never acceptable fine thank you